So before Bungie adjusts Choir of One, I wanted to get some footage of the gun week one in a solo GM environment, mainly because they've added Overload Auto Rifle and a suite of Auto Rifle mods on the artifact. So I wanted to try this out in a solo GM environment with Overload Champions up against GM ads and the damage it does and how it feels and the ammo economy, etc. So let's remind ourselves what it does. What is this weapon? It's a special auto rifle that uses special ammo, right? Not primary. And its frame says this. Fires extended range. Heavy caliber projectiles at a reduced rate of fire deals increased precision damage when in down sights. The exotic perk says fanatical lance. Rapid fire blows cause targets to explode into a pool of radio allowing fluid. Hip fire and launches multiple projectiles at once in a slower move and spread pattern. Projectiles detonate on impact. I have subsistence on it because it's only week one and that's all you can get right now. Uh, so that's all the information on the gun, right? Uh, at face value, but there'll be more in-depth information uh, in the range itself. So the build, I'm on a prismatic titan. I know that the gun, because it's void, would do really well with Grafalcon Hunter, but I don't feel like playing Hunter. And I haven't played Titan in ages, so I want to play Titan. And, and that's the only reason. So we've got Twilight Arsenal as our super. Thruster Dodge, Frenzy Blade, Pulse Grenade, Aspects Were, Knockout, Consecration. Fragments, Facet of Ruin, Blessing, Protection, Dominance, and Courage. We paired that with Exotic Class Item this time for science, just to see if it's good or not. I've got Spirit of Severance on it and Spirit of Armentarium. Double grenade and more explosions on finishers and powered melee kills. So weapon-wise, we went with Chatter and Bone, Choir of One and Edge Transit. So we need to pick a GM that's suitable for the auto because it's Overload Auto. So I just need a Overload Champ GM and one and nothing's good for that. So we've picked one and nothing. I could have picked Fallen Sabre, I could have picked any other, um, you know, Overload uh, style Exodus Crash I could have picked. Um, but yeah, we'll just pick this and let's just see how the auto rifle performs. So the exotic auto rifle choir of one obviously has two firing modes, hip fire and ADS. Similar to say Taiku's Divination, I was getting the same feels as that as it's easy to proc. It's not like some other weapons where you've got a whole reload to swip it, swap between different styles of shooting. So it's quite nice that it's got a hip fire function that suits what it does with the Riven Blast. And then when you ADS, it turns into a scout rifle. So I, I like it. The ease of use of the weapon first and foremost is, is really nice to use it. So we'll start with a good melee at these uh, initial bunch of adds. Uh, and then we're going to see what the auto rifle does from range. It has a lot of range, but I do think around about thir about 35 meters or 40 meters is where you get range drop off to stun an overload. Um, that's not me just thinking that. I actually tested the range on it. Not It's not in this run because this was the run. It was before this. So we'll get a stun here with our uh, pulse and then we'll do the hip fire, see how much damage we do. And then finish off with a bait and switch. Edge Transit. So it done a lot of damage there. Um, the thing about it is what you will notice when you hip fire, because it's got a 25 mag, you're only going to do a couple of blasts. By the time you've done that, you're going to need to reload. When you're in the middle of stunning a champion and doing damage, it means you're not going to be able to one cycle them so quick. Um, I did try the Actium War Rig chest plate with the gun, and the, it helped the hip fire. What, what what I mean by that is you could do more hip fires on a stunned champ to kill him. But I didn't want to... Um, I wanted to use this class item instead. I didn't want to just like use Actium War Rig because then I'm saying that you need War Rig to make the gun work, which you don't. But if you want to try War Rigs with the gun, uh, I do recommend it. Because even though I know we've got all the artifact mods to reload all rifles... That doesn't reload. That doesn't mean that you're gonna uh, fire more burst fire, hip fire in one mag. Per one mag basis, War Rig will let you do more Riven blasts. All right. So I just thought I would state that. So let's get a, some damage on this Hydra. See what good damage it's doing. Really doing really good damage there. 
the hydro was jolted. We'll get a stun here by our melee, then a pulse, then a bit of bait and switch. Well, we don't even need to bait and switch there. I was about to swap to heavy GL, but the blast done so much damage from the gun that I didn't need to. So, yeah, so far, so good. And the ammo economy of the gun's really good. Now, they have sa stated that the gun is holding too much ammo. Um, haven't used the gun. It wouldn't matter if they nerf it by, say, 20%. The gun would still be really good on ammo economy. I don't think they have said what they're doing with the gun. Right? They haven't said ex explicitly what the tuning updates for the gun will be. But, trust me, if they nerf the ammo economy of the weapon by like say 20 percent it won't hurt the weapon you'll be all right you'll still be able to spam it if they nerf it any more than that i think that's where it will start to uh make you not want to use the gun and it's in their interest to keep the gun powerful in my eyes um don't nerf it too heavily whatever they're doing they they, they, they don't need to don't nerf it too heavily it's just because of where we are with the state of the game right now it's actually a beneficial thing if we have something OP like this and it's the first gun of its kind to me it's more like a ranged rocket sidearm or hybrid scout it fills the same role as what a scout as what a rocket sidearm does because it's a pseudo primary yeah and Bungie are a fan big fans of pseudo primaries they've said that multiple occasions they're doing everything how much things are they doing to make us use these types of weapons? Like your Forerunners, your Ariana's Vows, uh, you know, your Rocket Sidearms, now you acquire of one. They're wanting people to use these types of weapons because they don't want, you know, like the old double special meta with a heavy weapon getting loads of heavy. They would prefer people to run like pseudo primaries, right? You could even run double, double pseudo primaries. You could have the call. Quite of one, and then a heavy weapon. People are starting to do that, and the ammo economy of that might not be too bad. So, we're killing some of these goblins here. Obviously, Barry is really good, because it just through, uh, shoots through their immunity. Uh, we're going to melt this hide from a distance, see what the, the scout rifle does, sort of for usability and damage. We didn't get a good rotation there, but once that shield comes round, uh, I would have actually preferred Barrier... Or a rifle. Uh, just to see how this gun will be like with a barrier. But um, that's fine. We c you can sort of simulate that. The way that you could get barrier auto is take off the overload auto rifle mod off the artifact. And then run radiant build. And you will be able to sort of simulate what it's like with barrier. Because radiant obviously gives you barrier. I'm going to get a uh, consecration melee off here. And then sort of hegel to this champ. Because this is a good way of doing it, by the way, this. Because it means that you're not stuck on the other side dealing with barriers that are awkward to deal with. So it's a good it's a good position because the barrier on the podium thing ca can hit you, but not so much. And you can do, deal with them safely. You just need to obviously ke clear out these goblins every time they spawn them. But we've got a melee for that. Just deal with this Minotaur a little bit. Get sniped there. That's the double solar resist saving us. I believe it's solar threat on this GM. Pretty sure it is, right? Um, so it must be because we've survived that sniper shot. We'll get a good pulse nade on here. Some bait and switch edge transit. We want to finish that champ just before this spawn starts. And then we're pretty much done now. Clear these goblins. And then let's showcase the um, scout rifle off a little bit. So yeah, I've got a lot of GMCPs, obviously with the node come up. I heard that a lot of people that it's bugged for them and they, sh they haven't got it or something. I know that in the past, with the Conqueror, because there was a neat, the first ever Conqueror guild, um, you had to do extra triumphs. You needed to complete GMs with a sub, with a stasis subclass equipped and a solar subclass equipped and all this sort of stuff. I believe they still exist, those triumphs, for those who haven't done them. So, if you've never gilded your first Conqueror, um, 
then you won't have the Conqueror GM node. Or that's how it used to work. But people are saying that, obviously I wasn't really around, but I've heard a few people say they don't have the node. I've got the node, and anyone I know has the node who has plenty of Conqueror guilds. So I don't know what the situation is that. But I'm, I'm glad that I've got it because I can mess around with checkpoints. Because the checkpoint is, is... Checkpoints to me are so valuable. They're more valuable than loot to me for this game. Crazy to say, but it, it's, it's true. So we'll come to the next section here. Um... Yeah, this is a good laning section to test the scout as well. So he doesn't one-shot the ads. He almost one-shots red bars, which a rocket sidearm, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm shooting one-shots red bars on GM, right? As long as it's overcharged or surge or whatever. I'm sure it does. Um... But the mag is a lot bigger than a rocket sidearm, and it's got more range. But a rocket sidearm does have a lot of range as well anyways. Just comparing the two archetypes. Um, we'll get a stun here. Nice damage with the hip fire. I accidentally popped Transcendence here. I was meant to go for Finisher. That's fine. We'll end up using it anyways. Our Transcendence, that is. We need to bait this second on stop. We still got transcendence, so we'll bait him. Nice if we had a reload, but we didn't. That's fine. We'll back up there because we got too much aggro on us. But yeah, this gun to me feels like a high powered scout rifle. It doesn't feel like an auto rifle, even though you can shoot it like one, just because of the amount of range it has. Kind of like Xenophage, but in auto rifle form. Honestly, that's what it is. So, um, obviously, if you've been around the game for a while, anytime there's anything difficult when you're fighting from range and you need to kill VIPs that are perched up top somewhere or things like that, Xenophage is king. Think, think King's Fall... Charge more totems. Day one. What was people using? Do you remember it? It was Xenophase, right? Well, if this scout rifle existed then, that's, the people would have been using this scout. Because it could deal with ranged targets really quickly and melt them. So this gun in the sandbox... That was close there. This gun in the sandbox is just going to fulfill the role that Xenophase does, but in an energy slot form. That's just what the identity of the gun is going to be. Depending on how much they adjust, the, are they going to, you know, it depends on the adjustments. But as long as they don't nerf it too hard, and they just make the adjustments that they need to about the um, weird interaction between Divinity and this gun. As long as they just sort out what they don't like about it, and don't, you know, hit it too hard with a damage nerf or anything, then it should be good. Because I, I, I will say this, even if they nerf the blasts, the hip fire. If they don't leave, if they don't touch ADS, look at the ADS damage I'm doing there. That's massive. So if they do come with a hip fire nerf, but they don't touch the ADS part of the gun, then you're still golden because the ADS part of the gun is really good. Also, it is nice having the AD, uh, the hip fire, but you know sometimes from a range that hasn't that hasn't got the range to deal with it, and sometimes in Grandmaster environment, you're fighting from 30, 40 meters away. So that's where the ADS is obviously king. So I do actually think the ADS functionality of the gun, if you were to just ADS all 250 shots, do you realize how much ammo that is? That's a lot of ammo. If you don't, if you were to be conservative with the gun and only ADS, you could pretty, you could pretty much do a full GM. We'd only using this gun if you were in a team. Because obviously he can't stun every single champ. But I'm just saying, say if you're in a team and you only your role was the scout guy and you only ADS'd with the gun, you wouldn't run out of ammo. Because you would get enough special throughout the run, as long as it maybe wasn't a double special build that you're using, you would have enough ammo with the gun for the entire GM. 
pretty much. Especially if your teammates are doing uh, finisher kills, spe special finisher kills and stuff for you. So you could literally just use the gun for the entire thing. Um, so yeah, on a solo, you could. You could run a special finisher build. I've got armor charges on the left here, but those armor charges are for melee kickstart. But say I was doing something else I didn't want melee kickstart on, I could have run a special finisher build and had even more ammo for the scout. So yeah, we'll kill the final overload. Obviously, this is cap point. I'm not giving you too much advice on this GM because this GM isn't up. So uh, I don't need to go super in-depth with every single thing that I'm doing because the GM that is up this week is actually Europa. It's not um, It's not this one. But the, G the Europa GM isn't an overload GM, so I'm not doing it with the gun. You know, I could on a... You know, on a stage, uh, on a prismatic warlock and all that sort of stuff. But I've played a lot of warlock lately and I want to sort of not play as much and start uh, playing a bit more on my Titan. It is critical on the cap point. Look at that pulse. Just over his shoulder. It is critical on the ABC that we get the unstoppable killed rather quickly. Which he would have been killed quicker. But we missed the pulse and it just went over his shoulder. Notice as well, we cap point A, right? You don't need to cap it until two seconds, three seconds. Don't leave it too late, but look, I've left it to what, four seconds? That meant that I could prep cap point C. I didn't do a good job of prepping it, but um, with me doing this more efficient in the past, you'll have seen that I'll prep cap point C a little bit better with like killing some of the goblins, because that, that, that uh, helps you out for later on. Because the real timer doesn't start until after cap point is finished. Then you get two timers for B and C. Because these are Prison of Elders mechanics. Basically. Cap point B, you don't need to clear ads. You can you can sort of hide behind this rock and stuff. And sometimes the ads will actually de-aggro and fight each other. That time they didn't, but I was safe enough to continue. So now... Looking at the clock, we got 30 seconds. So we've got more than enough time. So we'll just scout some of these goblins. I was actually prepared to be fighting this Minotaur. But he didn't push. He's over there. Well, he does push. Just look at this. He's devilish. Look at that. That's why I had the scout rifle equipped. Just in case I need to do a quick, quick hip fire. So those shots sort of burst his shield and de aggroed the Minotaur. And helped me. Bear in mind, it's overloading that. The Minotaur as well. Because Overload isn't just Overload. It's Disruption. If you disrupt an, a combatant, you lower their damage scale against you. So Overload does two things, not one. So you can, yes, Overload. Miners, Mages, Ultras. Not just Overloads. I think the distinction there is that people think it's just for Overloads. Which, why wouldn't you think that? Because it says Overload rounds. Um... People don't don't read the fine print, but it's always been like that. So this this art rifle is also good, good good for that, and you get resistance with a mod from the artifact, so you get improved resistance when you're doing sustained fire against a target, which you'll have seen that proc a couple of times on the left hand side, and you're overloading them, so you're safe using this art rifle, which gives you an idea of sweet business. How good is Sweet Business with the Artifact mods this season? I bet it absolutely shreds. I bet it actually shreds. I know that this art rifle I'm using also shreds, but Sweet Business always shreds, especially with War Rig on a Titan. So good. It is so good. It's not meta because the meme of Sweet Business takes over, but Sweet Business is actually really good. They buffed it ages ago. I think people forget it actually has explosive um, rounds in the gun not in the traditional sense but it has like a, a, a blast that it procs every now and then so with one and nothing we want to make sure we don't bug out the checkpoints because it has a bad history of bugging checkpoints out so uh, I just know this from the past I wait for dialogue to finish when it says your treasure awaits I then open chest I won't do it until because I have a lot of bad memories of completing this GM and 
no champ spawning and no chest spawn, only the boss. And then you have to reset. So ever since that's happened to me, I don't know, say five, ten times in the past, I never have rushed the checkpoints. Always wait for dialogue to finish with one and nothing. It's notoriously bad for bugs. You also can skip that overload at the cap point A, B and C. I forgot to mention. So you know when I killed the, the unstop after cap point A? Well, there's an overload, but we don't touch him. You can skip him and still get plat rank, platinum rank. So this is kind of awkward, this little bit here. The reason why it's awkward is because I sold you at the start of the video. Quiet of one has like a range drop off on overloads for like 35 to 40 meters. That meterage there from me and that overload is probably 40, 45 meters. I'm not going to stun the overload effectively and I will only waste special ammo doing it. So I already know this in advance because I tested it early on and I'm not going to do that. But it can, look at this chunk. It can do damage from here, but it just can't stun effectively from range on an overload. But that's only unique to this season. Because next season it won't be overload auto. It might be barrier auto. I hope it is, because we haven't had barrier auto in ages. Or I feel like we haven't had it in ages. We maybe have, I don't know. Um, we have no unstop weapon, but we're just going to see what the scout rifle does, or the art rifle does. With uns Look at that unstun damage it's doing. That's so much damage. Like the health pull of an unstop is so much more when they're not stunned. So that just goes to show how much damage it's actually doing. If a damage can, if a weapon can do so much damage to an unstunned uh, champion, then it's going to be good no matter what. It's just going to be good. So we're going to jump down now because this unstop's weak enough. I'm going to take advantage because the unstop's still alive. I want... To stun this overload now, now that we've dropped pop down, I want to get a stun and a pulse nade on that overload while the unstop was still alive. So it just gives us that brief uh, momentary lapse to, to do the damage. And then we can get a double stun because obviously when you jolt, you don't just stun once, you stun twice. That's how, that's why pulse grenades or well, jolting targets like overloads is just so valuable to you because you're not just stunning them once because the jolt effect lingers and then when you hit them with more damage on the second stun, it stuns them again. We're just going for ammo pickup here. We haven't used our heavy much, so I apologize for that, but the, the this video is all about Choir of One, really, for the most part. It's not about me using baits with uh, heavy GL. It's just, it's just what I put on. Uh, that's just what I used. I could have used literally, I could have used literally anything else. I could have used a sword if I wanted to. But, yeah. So if Warden and Nothing's a pain point for you, which I doubt, it, I doubt it is, but if it is, there is a neat little thing, that, well, there's a few neat, neat little things you can do with the boss fight. Um, which I'm going to show you now. So we'll kill that barrier. We're going to use our super because we've got one to use on the boss. So we'll use our Twilight Arsenal, which is now fixed. It was bugged a few weeks ago, a few months ago. And then we're just going to jump down here to the second girder. There's an invisible floor. And we can stand here and we are 90% immunity. We can now just kill the boss. Um, but yeah, now I just want to see what damage it does against the Mad Warden. The Scout. The Auto. Whatever damn gun this is. And the, the HP part chunks... I know that Mad Warden hasn't got the most HP across all GM bosses, but it's chunking. Trust me, that is chunking. That's a lot of damage that it's doing there. And some of those, for body shot damage as well, it's doing a lot of body shot damage. Not just crit damage, but body shot. So yeah, it, it, it's really good. Um, again, if they do, if they, all I want them to do, well, I don't even want them to do it, but all I would like them to do is nerf the ammo economy of the gun and the divinity interaction. That's all they need to do. Don't, don't start messing around too much with its ADS damage. Don't, you know, maybe don't even adjust the Riven Blast. How many how many years of as Guardians being killed by Riven, Rivens? It's time for a bit of payback, is it not? I would let this ride three, four months before they nerf it. At least. That's a good amount, chunk amount of time for people to have a play around with it. So yeah, look at the damage we're chunking. Oh, but anyways, we've transcended loot. 
I don't really want this GM loot. I want to keep CP. So we're an absolute madman. And we're going to go to Warbit. That was the solo GM on this. Hope you enjoy. Thank you.